a bit of a breeze today. Hopefully, I don't lose my notes. Otherwise, we'll have to wing it with the help of God. But make you all very welcome. We do mean that sincerely. We thank everyone for coming. Those that come occasionally, or whether you're a stranger to the area or local that comes every week, we do appreciate uh, you coming along uh, under the sign of the gospel. As Quite a few scriptures to read today, and you know, that, that's a blessing because the scriptures can say far more and are much more meaningful than anything I can say. Uh, I've just been led to read several verses uh, concerning the message of the gospel. The first one we find is in Jeremiah, and it's 21 and verse 8. It was in the calendar just a couple of weeks ago I saw this verse, and this is what triggered my thoughts towards the meeting today. And it says, And unto this people that I shall say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. It's a very simple verse. It's a very profound verse. A, a, a verse of great, two distinct paths. Uh, and it, it deserves thought because it says, thus saith the Lord. And this is the word of God. This is the word of God to you today. Thus saith the Lord. Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. I just want to ask you today, what path are you on? What road are you on today, this day, Lord's Day in October? 2021. What's at the end of that road? However long or short that road may be. Is it life, eternal life? Or is it what the Bible calls destruction or a place called hell? And we have to be very straight and very honest. And we hope, and I always try to be very simple, that even a child can understand that there's a heaven. And there's a hell. I'm going to speak much more about heaven and about Christ and about salvation than I'm going to speak about hell. But I have to speak about that. And I have to be true and faithful to the word of God and faithful to you because there is such a place. What is at the end of your life's little journey? And when we think of the vastness of time as we can consider it, our little life at best, is brief. It's just like the falling of a leaf. So be in time. Come to know Christ before your life gets to the end of that little journey. So he says here, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. So I want to read some more verses that will help on that. This is found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. We're using the gospel application in these verses today. Enter ye in at the straight or the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight or narrow is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. So there's many that find the way and follow the way to destruction. And there's few that find the way unto life. Now, there's no restriction on the number because Christ died on the cross and shed his precious blood. And the worth of that sacrifice is enough to see of every man, woman, boy and girl of all eternity. Everyone in this country, everyone in this world could be saved because of what Christ did on Calvary's cross and the worth and value of his precious blood that was shed. So there's no limit. It can be anyone and everyone. And this is where the responsibility comes to yourself to accept it, to take it to yourself, to find that narrow way and really what it's saying is, you know, 
as we look at the world and all its broadness of, of cultures and religions and uh, things that go on in the world and people who maybe even know nothing of Christianity and Christ. There's a broad mass of going on there that leadeth to destruction. And there's no time for Christ. And there's only one way that you can get to heaven. There's only one way you can get off that road to destruction. That pathway to death and onto that way of life. And that is through the precious blood of Christ. It's through Christ and Christ alone. And we can't preach anything else because it's just through Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ himself could say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. But through me, through him. I am the way, he said. There is no other way. So that's what it's meaning in these verses, that, that narrow is the gate and narrow is the way, because there's only one way. There's only one way for you to get to heaven and to know eternal life. And it's through the person of Christ and his shed blood on Calvary's cross. One way. The Lord Jesus to say, I am the way. The truth and the life. So think of those simple things. Think of those things in your heart and in your mind. Which pathway are you on? Which road are you following? Is it the broad way of, of, of the world and of sin and of ignoring those things? I don't think so because you're here today to listen to the gospel. And that's what we thank you for coming along. So you have an interest. You know that if you're not saved, you need to be saved. And all we are seeking to do is to point you to that person who can save you, because we can't. There's none of us can. We can just bring the gospel to you and bring Christ to you and hope that the Holy Spirit does his work and opens up your heart to accept the Lord Jesus as your Savior. Because that's what it is. It's accepting and resting and trusting on a person, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is the way. He shed his precious blood on Calvary's cross to pay the price for my sin and your sin and the sin of the world. And we come to him for salvation. So just ask yourself, what, what road are you on? What's at the end of that road? I mean, we get caught up in the things of everyday life and we go through life. And, you know, sometimes I think about my own career path and how it actually drifted. It wasn't really planned and it drifted. Is that something like your life that it's just drifting along and one day at a time and we do those things and then it's night and then it's the next day and we don't really give a lot of thought. Remember life at best is very brief. It can be taken very quickly. My brother died at 14. Life, sometimes we think life is cruel, but we can't answer. We don't know the reasons. But these things happen, and we have to accept it. But you need to make it personal. You need to look at yourself, and you need to consider yourself, and consider your soul, and where it's going to be for all those ages of eternity. Because life is a little dot in eternity. Eternity is never ending. Where will your soul be in eternity? And today, you can start on a new pathway and a new road, and that road that leads to life. Through Christ, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me, he said. So that's the pathway. You know, in Proverbs 16 and 25, it says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And that's the way of the world. I was talking to a man on Friday at work, and he's new to our place, but 
we're just having a chat about things. And uh, he said to me one time that he was talking to a Baptist uh, pastor. And the Baptist pastor had said to him, you know, there's Protestants and all those denominations and, and that, and there's the Catholics and there's all that, and there's all the other. And he says, they're not Christians unless they're saved. Well, this man thought to himself, he thought, well, are we not all working out of the same manual? This is the way he referred to it, the same book. And he thought, well, we're, we're, we're all trying to be good and we're all trying to lead a good life. He says, and I, that's what I do. I just try to be good and lead a good life. And I said to him, well, well, and he said, but I do love a good theological discussion. And I just said to him, well, if leading a good life is enough, then why did Christ have to die on the cross? Leading a good life is not enough. The ways it seemeth right to a man, it's not enough. The Bible tells us that all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of God because we cannot go for one day without sinning. We cannot go for one hour without sinning our thoughts, even, even things that we're not really conscious of can be sinful. So we need somebody to pay the price for that sin because we cannot pay the price for our sin. We cannot be good enough. We cannot keep all the commandments. We cannot live a righteous life, totally righteous. So we needed somebody to be our savior, to pay the price for our sin. And that has happened at Calvary's cross. The Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for our sin at Calvary's cross. It is enough. It's enough. He could say on the cross, it is finished. The work for atonement, for sin, for paying the price for our sin is finished. His blood. God demanded a sacrifice. He gave his son for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's the gospel in that verse. If you go home and even read that verse, let it sink in. God gave his son. He paid the price for our sin. And you resting and trusting and believing in that. And on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will know what it is to be saved in a moment of time. You know, in John's Gospel, and I love these verses, in chapter 10, <clears throat> verses 9 to 11, the Lord Jesus could say, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And he shall go in and out and find pasture. So the Lord Jesus is saying he is the door. He is the way. It's through him. A door is the thing you go through. It's through him. If any person enter in through him, he shall be saved. It's an offer made to you today again at the harbour in Port of Oakland. Accept it. It's a gift. We'll talk about that in a little second. And he shall go in and out and find pasture. You know, these verses here talks about the good shepherd. I'm going to read that in a wee second. And to a sheep, pasture is green and lush and all it desires. And you know, that's the Christian, the person who's got saved, the person who knows the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, moving in the light of what they have come into the good of. Pasture is feeding on him, feeding on the word of God. Knowing that connection with him, that's the pasture. There's none better than to feed upon him, knowing him as your Lord and Savior. That's the joy. That's the inner joy that the believer has, that nothing, nothing can take away. We go through ups and downs in life like everybody else. We have very sad times. With times we get low. There's times we're tempted. There's all sorts of things. But that never leaves. 
That inner peace and joy and knowing the Lord Jesus. That's the pasture we can come to and feed upon. And that's what we wish for you today at the harbor. That you will come to know him. And come to feed upon him. Once you've accepted him as your savior. And you'll never ever ever regret it. And you'll never forget it. For it's, it's good. It's good. There's no bad in it. It's good. So we commend them to you. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the enemy. That's sin. That's the Satan. They will only try to bring you down and bring you away. Tell you, you don't need to today. Put it off till tomorrow or next week. That's what Satan would say. He would say, now is the day of salvation. Now is the time for you to be saved. Now. Because none of us know what a day brings. None of us. Death can happen or the Lord can return. And then it will be too late. I am come that they might have life. And they might have it more abundantly. You know, you might have a good life in your, in your general day. And as you go on in life, it might be good. You might have a happy family life. Good bank account. Good job. All that. But this is a more abundant life. This is a full life. This is a life living with Christ in, in you, knowing him as your Lord and Savior. This is a fulfilled life, not a life you live. We can, we can have the joys of, of life, pleasure and, and, and holidays and that sort of thing. This is something for eternity. This is something that will be forever. This is a connection. This is one who will take you on to himself. This is one that will take you and you will be with him for eternal ages. No darkness, no place of, of, of darkness and fire and torture that the Bible describes when it talks about hell. This is a place of peace. There's no night there. There's no sin, no darkness. Eternal life with the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal ages. What could be more abundant? And that's what we again wish for you. And then the Lord Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He giveth his life. That you could be one of his sheep. That you could know the good shepherd. That you could know him as your savior, as your Lord. And as it says, uh, your brother in the Thomas in the Book of John, he could call him, he could say, My Lord and my God. Wouldn't that be nice that you today, tonight, as you would put your head in the pillow, could thank the Lord Jesus and say, My God and my Lord. What a blessing that would be. You know, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And this really comes back to what I was saying about the chap I was talking to. For by grace are you saved. It's, it's from God. It's the grace of God toward us. For by grace are you saved. That's the grace of God giving us some, the Calvary's cross, that we could be saved. For by grace you see it, and you accept it by faith. In faith, through faith, you accept it. Through faith. You put your faith and trust in that. It's just like you put your faith and trust in the car to bring you to the harbor today. You get in, you turn the key, your faith that's going to start, your trust that's going to start and bring you down. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll work. But this, putting your faith in Christ, will never fail you. Put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you have something that never will let you down. We can come and go. We can be weak or strong. But he never changes. See him yesterday, today, and forever. And that's something to put your faith in and trust in. Not the Ford or the Audi or the whatever, but Christ. Trust in him and know what it is to be saved. And it says there, uh, not of yourselves, there's nothing we can do. It is the gift of God. 
It's a gift offered to you today evening. Gift of salvation. The gift of knowing his son is your savior. It's not of works, not of being good, not of anything we can do. We can't bring anything to it. We just take it. You know, in a couple of months' time, we'll be looking at Christmas and there'll be presents and gifts given. And if somebody gives you a present or a gift, you don't refuse it. This is a gift offered by God. Please don't refuse it. Please accept it. Today, in the car, where you're sitting now, accept it. Take it from God. He wants you to take it. He has given his son, for God so loved you and me that he gave his son. It's a gift, and it's not of works, lest any man should boast. We have nothing to boast of. We have nothing, no part in it. Nothing of us. It's all Christ, and Christ alone, and his shed blood. We commend it to you today. There was other verses, but time is gone. So what road are you on today? What road would you like to be on? Would you like to know the Lord Jesus as your Savior? Yes, you would. You're here listening to the gospel week in, week out. Please make this the day. Do you accept him? Did you take him? He will never let you down. He will never fail you. We don't look at us, we will fail. But the Lord Jesus will never fail. He wants you to come to him. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, that worry about these things. And he says, I will give you rest. No rest like it. No rest like the rest the Lord can give. Eternal peace. So come to the Christ today and know him as Savior. And we pray that will be your portion today. Let us pray.